Welcome back boys and girls, my name is Anton and in this video I want to talk about entity framework or transactions and what are like different ways that you can write them in your code and the pros and cons that you're going to get with how you write the code and how you're going to be using these transactions. So if you're enjoying the video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to check out the description and if you want the source code, come support me on my Patreon. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, we have a simple application and we will have four main ways uh, that we are going to be looking at how we can potentially be using these transactions. Uh, so first of all, let's go over the code a little bit. Uh, super simple. We have a database, so a DB context with some kind of model. This doesn't really matter. We just want something to execute a, a transaction with. All right. So then the first scenario is if you have some kind of repository and perhaps you are even mixing in a unit of work, right? So uh, I don't use the unit of work pattern, so I don't know how you would mix a transaction into that. Perhaps uh, you would probably want to use the fourth method, uh, but uh, effectively you have a repository, perhaps you have a service that is then consuming this repository and you need to wrap it in a, well, you need to wrap that in a transaction because you may have multiple calls to the repository. And then I just have a sample with no transaction to demonstrate the fourth scenario. So the second scenario is a middleware, right? So we create a custom middleware and that is going to work around an endpoint. This has its own downsides, which I will talk about in a minute. Uh, we then have an action filter or an endpoint filter. You can put this on a controller action or on an endpoint. And uh, this just works a little bit closer to the endpoint. And again, I'll talk about uh, benefits a little bit later. And then we just have a simple wrapper. So you're just going to pass a function of whatever you want to run. It's going to run in a transaction. Okay. So it doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> you just want it in a transaction. Okay. So uh, we register all of the services. We register the middleware. And uh, so we just want to list the models to make sure that they're created. We have the ingrained scenario where we just uh, get the service and we use the write method, which has the transaction. Uh, we then use the transaction middleware, middleware attribute to mark the endpoint for the middleware over here to say, yes, we want this endpoint to run in a transaction. Okay. Then there is an endpoint to just uh, demonstrate an error. If you have a transaction wrapping another transaction to just have a little bit of a talking point about an issue that you may run into. And then you have the endpoint filter, right? So an endpoint filter, you just add it like that and we run with no transaction. Same as with for the second endpoint where we use the middleware, we run with no transaction. And then for the wrapped, we have the in transaction wrapper. However, that decides to implement the transaction. And then whatever action, whatever service we have, we just pass that action to the in transaction. Okay. And that will run in a transaction. Cool. So uh, I have the application running. And just to demonstrate, we're going to go to middleware. I'm going to take this breakpoint and I'm going to move it up here just to show you how this is going to trigger. I also have an endpoint over here, which is going to trigger on an action filter or an endpoint filter, right? And I don't think I have any other breakpoints. So uh, let's go ahead, pop over here. I'm going to close this and refreshing the endpoint, just uh, the home endpoint where I'm going to be listing the things in the database. You will see that the transaction middleware will trigger but because we don't have the transaction middleware attribute, which is the metadata, which is set on the two and the two error. Okay. So that's the only two times where we're going to be entering uh, this uh, transaction middleware. So I'm going to move the breakpoint just so we understand that that is the case. Okay. So with that super simple demonstration, we are going to go to one, it's going to add and I'm going to refresh and now it's over here. So let's just go ahead, duplicate this. So that operation of adding a model has ran in a transaction. We can then also run it in middleware we, where you can see now we're entering the middleware and we're going to be running this operation in a transaction. Okay. That has added and I'm going to refresh here and we have two things. Okay. So let's go ahead and run the two error. So I'm going to go ahead and let this run and we're going to get an, ex an exception that you already have a transaction within a transaction. Okay. And you, you shouldn't be having that, right? So program over here, we're using the right, which has a transaction internally ingrained within it. And then you have this transaction middleware attribute. Okay. Uh, this is the first talking point of uh, uh, the 
ingrained scenario where you are using a transaction directly within a service uh, rather than as opposed to having something that you can constantly wrap it in on need basis. Uh, let's say you have this logic that you're running in the transaction and you want to reuse this piece of logic. If you've written your code in this way to begin with, there isn't any problem with it up until you need to reuse, let's say, about yay much of the logic somewhere else. Uh, but then, you know, the transaction gets in the way. So at that point, you're wasting time to refactor this, to take this out to a common method. And then perhaps you will be able to use that common method and not the transaction. Okay, so this isn't a bad approach. This is uh, with this approach, you're either going to have to go ahead, move, duplicate the logic, or then spend time on refactoring. It, okay, and that is if you have uh, your, I don't know, vertical or horizontal slices, if you have a service for your vertical slice, and that has transactions in it, as soon as you need to use that logic somewhere else in conjunction in conjunction with something else, and you need to wrap the whole thing in transaction, uh, then the thing falls apart, okay, and then you need to start refactoring it. We want to avoid this refactoring. Now what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring this, um, what's it called, transaction outside of the method. And hence now we're approaching, okay, we may want to just wrap whatever we're doing in a transaction. So uh, the language that we're coming up with is mark this thing to be in a transaction. So this is where once you're marking to be something in a transaction, it's either middleware. It's an action filter. Or my favorite approach, the fourth approach, is just to just have an object to say it, it is going to handle the transaction, but then uh, you're just going to pass an action that is going to run within a transaction. Okay. So uh, the middleware and the action filter, I haven't added a mediator uh, example into here, but that is going to be very similar where instead of an attribute and an endpoint filter that you're marking up, you would have to mark your command uh, to be in transaction or something like that interface. And then in your mediator pipeline, you would have the same. You would check if uh, if this command abides to this interface, we should run a transaction or not. The problem that you would run in with that is if you're issuing multiple commands in transactions or that should be running in transactions, you will have to check if a transaction is already running. Uh, I've never been in a situation where I need to do that, so I don't know how you would do that, but you would effectively run into this scenario where you have a transaction within a transaction and things explode. So anyway, uh, if you pull out the transaction to the middleware level, uh, you have a, a couple of downsides, uh, which may be minor or major, depending on how you look at it. Effectively, model validation hasn't ran at this po point. Perhaps uh, you're, well, uh, let's assume that you're going to put use middleware as uh, close to the endpoint as possible. The main downside is going to be that uh, all of the model binding hasn't ran yet, and uh, you're effectively wasting work over here if validation starts to fail. Okay. And you have no way to touch the model. Uh, which is being supplied over here. Uh, let's uh, have a look, where is it? Right, so if I'm supplying some kind of model to an endpoint, I know I'm kind of hard coding it here, but let's imagine you're supplying it. You cannot touch it in the middleware. So then you cannot action whether you want to do it in a transaction or not. Uh, action filter alleviates the problem of uh, the model binding. So at this point, you already know what the model is. If you have validation running as part of your filters, uh, is already validated and you're effectively ready to execute the endpoint. Okay, so then you're effectively just wrapping the endpoint in a transaction. So then the main downside that you have with the filter and the middleware for, of effectively pulling it out a little bit too far away from your business logic is that now if you want to run a transaction as part of a background service away from uh, the HTTP context, you're no longer capable of doing that, okay? So uh, for me, the fourth approach where you just have in transaction, you, whenever you're running uh, this transaction, you're choosing that, okay, uh, I want a transaction to happen at this place and this is what I'm running in a transaction. You have effectively decoupled uh, your business logic from depending on uh, transactions. So now you can compose and orchestrate your business logic as much as you want. 
and uh, wherever you're using it, you are going to, well, just wrap it in a transaction. If you have your validation logic not uh, running as part of a filter or you have it as part of, well, inside of your endpoint, you can also very easily configure, okay, first validation runs, and then I'm going to run this in a transaction, okay? And you also have the choice of, okay, I wanna query the database, uh, does this uh, command actually have like in transaction flag? Should it run in transaction, right? So this really uh, for me is the most flexible solution where you can just pinpoint choose. Okay, it should run here. And of course also just because it's a class that accepts an action, it does not rely on the HTTP context. If you need a transaction in your background job, it can also you know do that. So the only current downside with this approach is that if you need to customize this process, you can't. Effectively, you would have to have the in transaction builder or whatever your abstraction is to say, okay, I want to run this in a transaction, but here are the things that I want to happen before, or here are the things that I want to happen after, or here are the things that I want to happen if uh, the transaction fails, before I roll back, do I want it to retry, etc. All of these things that you may want to potentially do in this place, this place, or this place. Uh, currently, this implementation doesn't allow you to do that. So perhaps then you may try to create a, a complicated component like a, in transaction builder, let's say, where you can potentially insert these into these places. I would say at that point, probably you don't want this, or if you're doing that, perhaps you're doing something wrong, but maybe just taking this logic out and hard coding it in this place will be the easiest option. And as a closing note, I just want to mention that nothing's stopping you from using multiple approaches. So if you just want to be able to mark your endpoints to run as a part of a transaction, and then you want to just have an end transaction component that runs in the background, uh, you know, you can have multiple pieces of logic of how you handle transactions. Perhaps you're going to have some kind of customization here uh, that you don't need here. Okay. And that is all that I wanted to talk about. Thank you very much for watching the video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. And if you have any questions or you have your own ways of handling transactions, please go ahead and leave it in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Also, if you would like the source code for this video and all of my previous videos, please come support me on Patreon. A very big and special thank you goes out to all of my current Patreon supporters. You help me make these videos. As always, again, thank you for watching. Have a good day.